We're continuing in Joshua. I hope that you've been enjoying getting into Joshua and digging deep. Uh, Chapter 14 today, if you'll have that open in front of you. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we turn again to this uh, great book, we pray that you would help us to understand what it means to follow you wholeheartedly. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. There is so much today that vies for our attention. Everyone says life has never been busier. There's so many things that put their demands on us, whether that be around work or family or sport or service clubs or church or extended family or business or finances or bill paying or upkeep and maintenance around the house or on the property. Even the demands of holidays and travel time, all relentless. The common quip of the retired is, I don't know how I ever had time to go to work. Even our grandchildren, our children live such busy lives with stuff before and after school every day of the week. So I want to ask you a question today. Is it feasible to give of ourselves something, to give of ourselves to something wholeheartedly? To give our undevoted attention, to be about one thing, if you like. When Caleb says in verse 8, of uh, chapter 14. I followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Was he kidding? Was he having himself on? Or were those times just more simple? It's not only Caleb that says that he follows God wholeheartedly. Moses says this of Caleb, so it is reported to us. Have a look in verse 14, uh, sorry, verse 9. Moses says of Caleb, you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly and then the author chimes in in verse 14 that Hebron belonged to Caleb because he followed the Lord the God of Israel wholeheartedly well what does it mean to follow the Lord wholeheartedly what does it look like I want to suggest to you today from Caleb's example that it means that you trust his plans that you claim his promises and depend on his strength Let's spend a little time on each today. First of all, it means that we trust his plans. I'm sure by now that you're familiar with the story of Joshua and his mate Caleb. Uh, 45 years earlier, when Israel had first escaped Egypt, Moses sent these two, along with 10 others, to spy out the land across the Jordan, the promised land that God had brought Israel out of Egypt to occupy. The other 10 spies said, look, there's just no way we can take the land. The cities have these big thumping walls around them. The people themselves are huge, enormous. Forget it. Joshua and Caleb, however, saw things differently. Back in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, we read, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. And in our chapter here before us today, this is how he describes what happened. Verse 8, have a look with me. My brothers, who went up with me, made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord wholeheartedly. So that day Moses swore to me, the land will be yours and your children's because you follow the Lord wholeheartedly. Now to speak up and against the other ten spies would not have been easy. To stare down the mob who had quickly taken on board what the other ten had said must not have been easy. We can't possibly take the land. Yes, we can, says Caleb. His wholehearted devotion to the Lord meant that he trusted God's plans. After all, this had been God's plan way back to Abraham. Right through the famine, which, had saved, which Joseph had saved them from, this was God's plan for his people. Right through the protection of Moses from death at the hands of Pharaoh, right through Moses being prepared for leadership of his people, right through the plagues, how many were there? Right through the original Passover, right through the final rescue of Israel, right through the crossing of the Red Sea, this had been God's plan and purpose all along to bring them into the promised land. Remember where they were to be God's people in God's place, enjoying God's presence. So Caleb gets that. 
His heart is entirely devoted to God. He trusts God's plans. It would make no sense at all, would it, for, for, uh, for God to, to get Israel to this point and then say, oh, well, I'm stalled. There's nothing more I can do now. It defies logic. How is it that God would be powerful enough to bring then banish plague after plague to finally bring his people over the Red Sea and out of Pharaoh's clutches, but then not powerful enough to finish what he started and to deal with those living in the land that he promised to give to them. Impossible. Caleb followed wholeheartedly. So he trusts God's plans. And when your heart is utterly devoted to God, you also trust his plans. I know God's plans for you. I know exactly what he has in mind for you. For each and every one of you. His plan is to transform you into the likeness of Jesus. To change you from one degree of glory to another. And then as we've been recalling in this series, his plan is to take you into the promised land. Not over in Israel but the new heavens and the new earth, the new Jerusalem. And so committed to that plan is he, is that he sent his son to die for your sin, to pay your debt, to deal with your sin, to wipe your slate clean, so that you can stand before God spotless and clean. And if you serve the Lord wholeheartedly, you will trust those plans even when life is difficult, even through heartache and tragedy and illness and relationship breakdown. You will still trust his plans. And the same sort of logic will apply. God would not rescue you from sin through Jesus just to dump you down the track. If he gave his son for you, will he be fickle and turn his back on you? No. Every hardship or challenge or sadness will be interpreted with this in mind. So that even through the hardest times, you will still say, I know God's plans. I trust God's plans to make me more like Jesus and to take me through into eternity in his presence. Well, because Caleb trusted God's plans, he claimed God's promises. Caleb had been promised an inheritance in the land. The promise had been a long time coming. Have a look with me at verse 10. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he had said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the desert. So here am I today, 85 years old. I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised to me that day. He serves the Lord wholeheartedly. So he knows that God is good for his promises. So independent, heartfelt trust. Not in arrogance as in pay up. No, no, no. In quiet trust. He says to Joshua, now let's go. Let me have what God has promised me. This is a lovely picture of claiming the promises of God. We need to be inspired by Caleb to do the same. We're often filled with fears and doubts and questions. Some of that I, I, I get, it's, it's understandable, knowing what some of you have faced or are facing. But the closer you walk with him, the more devoted you are, wholehearted devotion, then the more confident you will be in claiming and living in the promises he has made to you. What are some of the promises he's made to you that you should be claiming? The Lord's my shepherd. There's nothing I want. God is your refuge and strength, 
a very present help in trouble. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. He is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. I am with you even to the end of the age. He is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. How many more promises could I remind you of today? A thousand? Claim your promises. Revel in your promises. Stand on the promises of God. And your wholehearted devotion is sure to grow and deepen. Just one word of caution. Don't claim a promise for which you have no specific word from God. Sometimes I hear Christians do this. Oh, I'm just believing this or I'm just claiming this. When God has said no such thing to them. That's not the language of scripture. You can only stand on and claim a promise that has been specifically given you in God's word. Well, when you have a wholehearted devotion to the Lord, you'll trust his plans, you'll claim his promises, and thirdly, you'll depend on his strength. Uh, Have a look with me again at verse 12. This is Caleb speaking. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. With the Lord helping me. Not on his own. Not on his own strength. Not because Caleb is strong and mighty, but because God is strong and mighty. And when we trust his plans and claim his promises, we can and then should depend on his strength to do whatever it is he's asked us to do. The Apostle Paul knew this through his amazing ministry and through all the hardships he faced. He reported in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16 and following, At my first offence, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord stood by my side. He strengthened me. I don't know what lies before you this week. I don't know what it is that the Lord might be asking you to do. It may be to remain strong in the face of temptation. It may be to be wise for that family member who needs some insight. It may be that you have to stand up for yourself in some difficult context. It may be that you have opportunity to invite someone to church or to something at church. If you share a wholehearted devotion to the Lord, then you will depend on his strength for whatever he's putting before you to do. Lean on him. Don't try and do it on your own. Take a leaf out of Caleb's book. At 85, he's going to take the land he's been promised. And looking at whatever lies before you this week, say with Caleb, but with the Lord by my side, I will do just what he has said. And at the end of the week, you'll be able to stand back and say, yes, the Lord stood by my side. Caleb said, I followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Joshua said to Caleb, you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. The author said of Caleb, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. What does that mean? What will it look like? It means you trust his plans, you claim his promises, and you depend on his strength. God is saying, I don't want just certain hours of your time during a day. I don't just want certain amounts of money given to the church or a minimum of church activities in the week. I want you. 
I want your wholehearted devotion. This is about where your heart is. It's about love. It's about relationship. It's about passion and heartbeat. It's about, it's about what defines you, what drives you. Can you say, I follow the Lord wholeheartedly? Could someone look at you and say, yes, they follow the Lord wholeheartedly? Jesus stood by the fishing boats and called his first disciples and said, follow me. At once, they dropped everything and followed him. And Jesus says to you today, follow me.